Hello, uh, we're dealing with uh, the solo model again, uh, the simple version of the solo model, uh, and we're dealing with uh, applications of a model, so kind of like problems and that sort of thing. So with this particular um, problem, application of the solo model, we're going to deal with a change in technology. And I should kind of stop at this point and point out that we're still dealing with a simple solo model, so population growth and technology growth haven't been added in yet. Um, when I say a change in technology, uh, I'm just changing total factor productivity. Later on, when we kind of um, abstract the model a little bit, uh, we deal with populate with uh, technology growth, and we can deal with shocks in technology growth. So we're not dealing with that at all. Here, uh, the technology we're dealing with is A, where A represents total factor productivity. So uh, if you remember the production function, output right is equal to a function of the factors, so capital and labor. Uh, and then we have a, a variable for total factor productivity, A, here. Uh, in the later version that we deal with, we do labor augmenting technology. So it's like something along those lines. We'll get to it later on. So when I say change in technology, I say a change in total factor productivity. So uh, yeah, what I plan to do is I'm going to kind of summarize the basic effects with the solo uh, diagram, uh, and then we'll go through time series graphs to analyze the uh, transition dynamics of uh, the shift from one total factor productivity to another. Awesome. So looking at the solo diagram, uh, what can we expect to happen? How do things change in the steady state with a higher uh, total factor productivity, higher technology in the sense that I'm using it? Well, total factor productivity technology here enters into the production function. So uh, lowercase y output per person is a function of total factor productivity times capital per worker all raised to the alpha. So we can see this guy is going to shift. Um, if A is bigger, then this line shifts up by some amount. Um, but also keep in mind that the investment line here is also a function of total factor productivity, right? Investment is equal to the savings rate times um, output per person. And so output per person is that function, and A is in output per person, so we would also expect uh, the investment line to shift up. So um, since the, this break-even investment line is staying constant, uh, and then the investment line is definitely going to shift up, we can, we can kind of tell already that capital per worker is going to have a new higher steady state level. But let's see uh, the exact transition dynamics that we could expect. So give me a moment to draw that. Bam! Okay, so uh, A has increased, total factor productivity is bigger. To indicate that, um, you know, notationally, I'm going to have these subscripts where A sub naught is our initial total factor productivity and A sub 1 is our new total factor productivity. So uh, the effect is uh, where this is our initial output per person, given some value of capital per person. We now have a new higher output per person. So uh, with a higher total factor productivity, given any um, output, uh, capital per person, we, we result in a higher output per person. So it's a shift up. And then very similarly with um, our new investment line, uh, we have the new total factor productivity. Investment is just output per person times the savings rate. So if output per person shifts up, then the investment line shifts up. So this light gray green is our old investment. This darker green is our new investment. Uh, and we could see that where before this was our old intersection of investment and break-even investment, resulting in uh, the steady state capital per person, K star sub naught. We now, now have this new intersection. Um, so the new steady state value of capital per worker is this K star sub one. Uh, also where before we had output per person um, uh, associated with K star sub naught of this amount. So we had output per person right here. We now, in the steady state, have a new steady state value of output per person, this y star sub one up here. So um, yeah, um, but keep in mind, right, these things aren't instantaneous. Um, even though the steady state values have changed instantaneously, um, capital e it evolves through a process defined by this law of motion of capital, the capital accumulation equation. So even though the steady state value of capital per worker has increased, capital stock uh, is going to take some time to change and to get up to the new level. So what exactly is it going to look like? Um, well, remember the, the process that's going to define it is we're going to be starting at this point right here, at this intersection, uh, and then we see things shift up to here. So starting off at this capital per worker level, 
the new investment line is right here and the break-even investment line is right here. The difference between investment and break-even investment, so the difference between investment and break-even investment is the change in capital. So because investment, this point right here, is above the break-even investment line at this amount of capital per worker, uh, there's going to be a positive increase in capital. So you'll see this capital stock in the next period increase, uh, and you'll see that each period, as period after period goes by, um, you can see investment is greater than break-even investment, so our delta K is going to be positive and it's going to converge towards the new steady state value. So you should see like a, the nice, you know, slow transition to asymptotically to the new steady state value that we've become familiar with with previous examples. Um, so uh, let's look at that right now. So here are, in terms of per capita values, this is capital per worker. So before we were at this value right here, which was K star sub naught on our solo diagram, K star sub naught here, that initial steady state, right where this gray dotted line enters is when I increase uh, total factor productivity for this, this particular model. Uh, we, we jump up to this new higher steady state value, but capital worker worker doesn't jump up instantaneously. It has a slow transition dynamics. The initial moves are quite large, and then it approaches asymptotically to the new steady state value. So that's K star. Uh, sorry, that's capital per worker. That's how it evolves through time. But now let's think about how output per worker is going to evolve through time, because it's going to be a little bit different, right? So uh, when right at this gray dotted line, we have the capital per worker stock equal to this. So we're at K star sub naught. Um, and then at an instant in time, we have a new higher total factor productivity. So right at that instant, uh, the moment that happens, output per worker jumps up to the new output per worker function. So you, you're going to have an instantaneous jump in output per worker because associated with this capital per worker stock, we have this output per worker. So you'll have an instantaneous jump. However, there's still this transition dynamics that are going to have the lead capital per worker to evolve to the new steady state. And as that happens, as this capital per worker moves from point to point to point, as you know, period after period after period, um, output per worker is going to move along the new output per worker line. So you'll see an instantaneous jump and then a slow transition to the new steady state value of output per worker y star sub 1. So let's have a look at that. Uh, in a time series graph. So here you got output per worker. This line right here is uh, y star sub naught. So this value comes along the gray dotted line, which is where we increase total factor productivity. And here you see that instantaneous jump associated for it going from this point of output per worker to this point of output per worker because we have the new higher total factor productivity. Uh, and then as time goes by, period after period after period, as the stock of capital per worker slowly evolves to its new steady state, then output per worker is going to slowly evolve to the new steady state. And that's as we go slowly up this uh, production, the new production function to the new steady state. Um, so that's output per worker. And then uh, you, know, you have similar stories for consumption per worker and investment per worker. Um, hopefully that was clear. Um, I guess intuitively, uh, you know, I've been avoiding intuition, I've been focusing on the dynamics of the model, but intuitively, right, if you increase technology, people are just generally better off because the capital and labor is more effective in the economy. So if you were to increase technology, you expect output per worker and, you know, just things generally to be better off, which is what we see. Uh, all right, so if you found this helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and thanks and have a good day.